Hi, my name is Dave DeLauder and I'm the NICU Pediatric Specialist here at Frederick Memorial and I want to talk to you for a few minutes today about the Draeger VN500 Baby Log Ventilator. This is the new ventilator from Draeger. It's uh, state of the art, top of the line if you will. And what I'm going to do today is uh, demonstrate to you folks a little bit about the ventilator so that when we start using it you'll have a little bit more of a knowledge of it and it'll be a little more comfortable with the way the machine itself works. And you'll have an ability to adjust the FiO2, to silence the alarms. You're going to know what some of these different modes and different things are as well. So to start out with, this is our main screen. And when we have it on standby, obviously the patient is not ventilated. Most of the time, as nurses, you're not going to have to worry about doing anything with the start standby. But just in case you do, when you get to the place, there's a little button down here. And I think Amanda can probably draw in on this. There's a little button down here on the side that says start standby. You're going to hit that and it brings up the screen for the start standby. Right now we're in the ventilation mode. I'm going to keep it there for just a few moments and I'm going to show you some things about that and then I'll show you some other things with the non-invasive ventilation and it also goes down to the nasal cannula. So I'm going to let you know about that today as well. When we're in the start standby screen, you'll notice a couple of different things. We've got the baby's weight. If we put in that there's an, it's a new infant, we can anything we touch and it's highlighted yellow, we verify it down on the the control knob. When the new Neo, we have to go, we start, but what I want you to notice is we've got it defaulted to 1500 grams. We can put the baby's actual weight above or below 1500 grams, whatever it is. And that's important because what happens with that is the alarms and the tidal volume is set for that to go four to six, I think we have it set at five milliliters per kilogram to do, to deliver to the baby with that 1500 grams. So it calculates the tidal volume that the baby needs based upon that weight. So when the newborn is uh, first put on the ventilator, we can put the baby's weight in there. If the baby drops, which normally we know that they do, we can adjust it and make it so that the ventilator gives the baby what the baby needs and doesn't over volume, uh, give them too much volume, excuse me, or give them too much pressure and adjust it automatically according to the weight. When we get to the start standby, again, you hit the start at highlights and it's yellow. And this is our main screen and it comes up and it gives us our pressure waveforms. Now right now we're in pressure control assist control. And I want to show you a couple of different things. We have three different views. This is our first view. It gives us all waveforms and uh, graphics. The second view gives us waveforms and flow volume loops. It takes just a second to come up. And the third view gives us the waveforms and it gives us the lungs. Now if you notice the little brown, obviously that's the baby's diaphragm and if I move the test lung, you'll see the diaphragm move. So on this particular device, anything that's brown is what the baby is doing. So if you've got it in a different mode, which we'll switch here in a second, and you see something brown come up on one of the waveforms, of course our minute volume is going to go off now because I've been fooling with it. We're going to talk about alarms here in a few moments. If you see anything brown come up on any of the waveforms, that means that's a baby initiated breath. Anything blue is ventilator initiated and it gives, uh, it gives you. And this cool little thing gives you dynamic compliance and this cool little thing around here, the width of it tells you what the resistance is. So the narrower the blue band, the less resistance that you're getting from the tubing and the compliance and the baby's lungs. So it's pretty cool. It's a nice, uh, nice device, nice screen, nice thing to be able to look at. But we're going to go back to the first screen right now. Now we're in pressure control, assist control, so of course anything that the baby does is going to be pressure generated, or I mean machine generated. But let me switch out and show you what happens that I can show you that. Brown so that you know that the baby's getting the There it is. I was going to say, of course, when I want it to do it, it's not going to do it. You can see the brown, and that means that the baby's taking a breath. And that's what that is. Now, a couple other things I want you to remember about this. Our settings are down here. You can see them there, or you can push them here for, for your purposes. When you look down here, this is all the settings that we have. The FiO2 is the farthest, too. As you're looking at it, it'll be on your left. You hit, and you can adjust it to whatever you want and then you verify by punching the rotary knob. Gives us our inspiratory pressure, our eye time, 
our respiratory rate, our PEEP, our pressure support, our slope. And what slope is, slope is the flow. So we can adjust our flow with, what the, with the slope. And normal slope is 4 to 6, uh, excuse me, 0 0.04 to 0 0.06. Uh, defaulted, it comes to 5. Most of the time, that's sufficient enough for the babies that we see. And then our Pmax, when we set our peak pressure, this Pmax is a percentage above that. And then you'll see when we get to the alarms that the percentage above the Pmax is where the alarm for the high pressure is set so that the baby doesn't have any uh, pressure trauma caused by the ventilator. So all of your settings are here. Green is what you set. This is a cool little quote. Green is what you set. Blue is what you get. So what the baby's getting is over here. It gives you your percentage leak, your tidal volume per kilogram body weight, tidal volume per milliliters, minute volume, respiratory rate, peak inspiratory pressure, your mean inspiratory pressure, and your FiO2. And another place you can find all of this, if you want to find even any more information, if you go to the values button, this brings up the flow sheet that we use for our ventilator check. So if you push values over here, it brings up flow sheet for that, and you have values one, values two, and then the settings. And again, green is what you set, and blue is what you get. So when you see anything that's green on here, these are the settings that's, that the ventilator currently has, and the blue is what the baby is receiving. And this is the flow sheet directly from the computer graphics, so you can pull that from to document from your centricity as well. Alarms. Most important button on here for all of us is this alarm silence. If you hit that, it gives us 120 seconds or two minutes of alarm silence right here. It'll show up and it uh, lets you know that there is no alarm going on. O2 suction, another button I want to show you real quick. You push and you confirm. And we've got it set per NRP guidelines. We have a 20% above the set title, or excuse me, the set FiO2. Now, one thing I want you to notice here in particular, if you look at your FiO2 down here, it stays at 30. With the servo, it changes and goes to whatever the FiO2 is, whether it's 100% or whether it's a percentage above that. But what happens, this stays at the set per, uh, percentage, but the delivered FiO2 shows up on your screen and it goes up, right now I have it set at 30, 20% above that is 36, and it hyperoxygenates the baby for two minutes. If you want to go out of that, you can either hit this and get out of there, or you can hit the control, uh, excuse me, this would be the only place, this would be the only place you could hit it to get out of there. Okay, let me make sure I've got everything here for us. The alarm priorities. If you see, one thing I want to show you, and I'll turn it to the side here, and I think Amanda can probably see this pretty well with the video. We have two bars right here. And I'm going to go ahead and make this thing alarm, because what I want you to see is that from behind the machine, if you see and hear, if you hear an alarm, you can look and see what priority it is. Red being a high priority, and yellow being a medium priority. Now, you'll also hear the alarm, and what I want you to know about the alarm, we have it set to start at 50%. If the alarm is, and I don't, I'll use it for lack of a better term, if the alarm is ignored, it will get louder and louder until it reaches 100% or until we check the alarm. So you will notice that the alarm will get louder and you can see from behind, you've got your red stripe here that you can tell what priority the alarm is by looking at that and know what's going on. If it were a yellow priority or a yellow uh, medium priority, the yellow, this would be flashing yellow as opposed to the red. Takes a few seconds for it to reset. We're going to go ahead and let it reset here for a few moments. And it's ready to go. There are two different modes on here I want to talk to you about for a few seconds. It's under additional settings. One of them is automatic tube compensation. What automatic tube compensation does, we can come in here and we can put in the size endotracheal tube that the baby has from two to five. We can put it in there. So let's say we've intubated the baby with a three endotracheal tube. We've got it set for 100% compensation and we've got the Pmax at 26. We'll turn our, actually this is already on one, let me turn it off and turn it back on for you to show you. We'll go ahead and turn our automatic tube compensation on. What that does for a spontaneous breath when the baby generates it, 
that compensates for the endotracheal tube, the resistance in the endotracheal tube, and allows the baby to take an easier breath through that endotracheal tube as opposed to trying to struggle with the resistance of the endotracheal tube. And I want you to notice up here, this little ATC and the three ML, this little circle right here is supposed to represent the endotracheal tube and the slash through it means that there's no resistance through the, from the endotracheal tube because we have the automatic tube compensation on. So if you see this, that means the automatic tube compensation is on and it's set and ready to go. The other additional setting that I want to show you is volume guarantee. Now this is a really cool setting. What we can do is we come in here and we can set the tidal volume that we want, the desired tidal volume that we want to make sure that that baby gets. So let's just say we want to make sure that the baby gets a five milliliter per kilogram tidal volume. We set it, we adjust it, we've got our peak inspiratory, we've got our P max, and we can turn this on. Now, what does that do? What that does, and I've got a slide here that I want to show you for a few seconds, that I think it uh, explains it a lot better than me standing here and just talking to you about it. What that does, we've got our maximum pressure here, we've got the baby's pressure, the working pressure here, the red line is the peep, the blue line is the baby's tidal volume, and the blue line with the X is the baby's set tidal volume. Now what's going on here is that the baby's breathing along and doing just fine, and you can see that the baby's getting a tidal volume of six milliliters per kilogram, and then all of a sudden the baby starts getting agitated. And what happens is the machine senses that the baby's getting the volumes that the baby desires, but what I really want you to notice is your pressure line. Instead of popping off and blowing out and the baby not getting any volume, our pressure line drops even to peep level until the baby settles down then goes back up to the working pressure and the baby continues to get the volume that the baby is trying to uh, pull from the ventilator. Now if we had volume guarantee turned off, we'd be popping off and the baby wouldn't be getting anything. We'd have that high pressure limit and we wouldn't be give, ventilating the baby appropriately and the baby would still be agitated. But with the volume guarantee, that pressure drops, the baby still gets the volume that we want, the baby's more comfortable and the baby gets along better and it makes it a lot easier for us to get the baby eventually off of the ventilator. The one really neat thing about this ventilator is we can take them from mechanical ventilation, let me get this screen off of there, we can take this from mechanical ventilation, we can take it right down to CPAP, to CPAP, and then to nasal cannula. And I'm not going to go into a whole lot of that because you, don't, uh, you guys won't have to fool with that a whole lot, but I do want you to see how it's done, and I do want you to see what the screens look like and the differences in it. So what we have to do, anytime we make any changes, we have to go to the start standby screen. We have to put the machine into standby. It's going to remind me that it's in standby. And this particular one does not like my fingers for some reason. We are getting stylets that make it a little bit easier to uh, touch the, for the touch screen. Now, we're in the start standby. If you go to the tube in IV, we've got two applications. We've got tube and we've got NIV. I'm going to highlight the NIV and I'm going to put it into the NIV mode and two things are going to happen. Number one, obviously it's going to go to the NIV mode, but the way it's going to let us know that, number two, it's going to highlight this standby. It's going to highlight it in orange. Then, when we go back to the start standby, now we're in spontaneous CPAP. And we also have pressure control CMV, which is what Drager calls their CPAP. Now, this is in spontaneous, remember, so don't let that pressure control CMV scare you. The baby is spontaneously breathing. However, if you'll notice, we have peak inspiratory pressure and PEEP, and we have our, insp excuse me, our inspiratory time, our respiratory rate for backup, and again, we've got our flow and, of course, our FiO2, but this is all spontaneous. Now, what happens is every 38 times, say if we want 7 or 8 over 5, 38 times a minute, that baby's going to get that boost of that extra breath, the same as on the CPAPs that we presently use. Then we can take the baby from that to the spontaneous CPAP, now, don't let these two fool you. What this is, is our manual inspiratory and our, man, our peak manual inspiration and our manual inspiratory time. And all that is, is if we want to deliver a manual inspiration, so we can push that and give the baby a manual breath if we would so desire or if there would be a need to do that with there. But so that's the only two things this, that's the only thing these mean. 
This again is our PEEP, our slope, or our flow, and our FiO2. That's going to start alarming on me, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put us back into start standby here for a second. <coughs> Now, to go back, we're going to put it back on tube, highlight it. You'll notice that that goes back off. It's going to ask me if the neonatal flow sensor has been replaced, and I'm going to say yes. Now, I'm going to go back to the start standby screen. <coughs> and the second thing I want to show you here, under therapy, we've got ventilation and we've got O2 therapy. If I want to do the O2 therapy, I highlight it. Do not use NIV mask or prongs. What we're going to use now is just strictly the nasal cannula. And what we do with that is we'll actually take off the expiratory limb of the ventilator and just use the inspiratory limb, hook the nasal cannula to the end of this, the same as we would for the heated nasal cannula now. And I can start this. And you'll look down here in the corner. You're going to see the FiO2 and the flow. And we can adjust our flow from 2. And it actually goes the whole way to 50. I doubt seriously we'll ever need that for a baby. They'll be flying around the top of the room if we do that. But we can adjust it to whatever we need down to two liters. And we also can adjust our FiO2 to whatever we desire. And again, same as all the other ones, blue is, or green is what you set, blue is what you get, and you've got all your information on the screen over to the side. I think that's just about all there is to it. Pretty simple machine. Everything's right in front of you. If you have any questions or any problems, please don't ever hesitate to call. We'll be around. We'll give you a hand, and uh, our go-live date tentatively is uh, January 16th. Hopefully you guys will get a chance to see this, and hopefully it'll be a little bit of a help for you. And also, I'll be here. Don't worry. We'll help you. We'll get it through. It's all a learning process for each one of us. So we're going to have a good time with this machine. It's a great device, and it's going to be a lot of fun to work with. Thank you very much for your time. You guys have a great afternoon. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.